What's up everybody, Advance here, and welcome to my review of This War of Mine, The Little Ones, developed and published by 11-Bit Studios. So let's not waste too much time and jump right into it. Alright everybody, let's go ahead and start with the most important thing, and that's the gameplay, because as we all know, if you're not enjoying playing it, you're probably not going to stick around for very long. So one thing that I liked was the different pieces of gear you have to have on you to get through different obstacles. So for example, if there's a giant piece of rubble, you can use your hands to get through it, but it's going to take you like half the day, which is a waste of time. Or you can bring a shovel with you and you'll clear it really quickly. Or if there's a locked door, you can use a crowbar or a lockpick. Unfortunately, lockpicks dissipate, whereas a crowbar will last for quite a long time before you need to replace it. Bouncing off of that idea, let's go ahead and talk about another thing I enjoyed in this game, and that's the noise mechanic. So say you do use that crowbar to get through a door instead of a lockpick. The disadvantage of that is that you might alert people who are nearby. There is a nice little noise indicator on the screen letting you know how much noise you're making and how far it reaches. If you use a lockpick, you're not making any at all. If you use a crowbar, that noise indicator is going to get pretty large and you don't necessarily want to alert the people around you. Along with that, they have the stealth mechanic in this game, which isn't too overly convoluted, so it's not too hard to figure out. So basically, it comes down to if you want to walk, you can walk. If you want to run, you can run. But that noise indicator, indicator will get larger and larger if you're sprinting versus if you're just slowly walking through the level. So sometimes you might need to sneak up on an enemy because he might be a little bit stronger than you and it's a little bit easier to take him down. There's also nice little areas that you can hide in. So if someone spots you and you're able to get away from them, you can hide in an area and maybe stealth kill them from there. Next thing on the list is the survival mechanics, which are really nice because that's kind of the main point of the game is to allow everybody to survive. So there's a lot of different things you have to manage as a survivor, and that would be your hunger or say if you get ill or if you get injured, you got to make sure that you don't die from those wounds. They even have little things such as um, emotional scale. So if someone gets too depressed, they might not want to be around anymore in this terrible world that they're stuck living in. It kind of reminds me a little bit of The Sims, if anybody likes to play that, which is pretty nice because I personally love The Sims. And then they also have a nice little thing, which is a temperature gauge. So you got to keep your home space a little bit warmer. And don't you worry, they will throw a winter at you. So don't think you can get away with never, ever keeping a heater in the house. That definitely doesn't work. I tried it. It's a bad idea. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the negatives in the gameplay section. And unfortunately for me, that's the combat. And that's a big deal in this game because dying is permanent. So if you lose a survivor, it's all over unless you want to start a file over or you want to save scum, which who wants to do that, you know? So the main thing is I feel like it's really clunky. It didn't feel like it was skill based. It felt like it was kind of random number based. So for example, you might get into a fight with someone who's fighting you with an axe and you're fighting them with a baseball bat or some sort of other weapon. And it says, hey, you know, press R2. You press R2. You know what happens? You get hit first. You press R2 again. You know what happens? You get hit first again. And the next thing you know, you're dead because it doesn't last very long. My problem was it didn't seem like it mattered how often I timed my button presses. I was going to die regardless, and spamming didn't seem to help either, so it wasn't a matter of clicking it really fast. At least that was in my experience, maybe I missed something, but for me that was a big negative. Unfortunately, we still have two more negatives to go through, and that is the repetitiveness for me personally. So for example, you have to go to different locations to get supplies, scrounge up materials, scrounge up food, whatever it might be, medications. The thing is, you have to go there over and over and over again until you totally drain it of all the supplies, potentially. So you're going to the same place over and over. And once you beat the game once, I mean, there's not a lot of incentive to play it again unless you're just that interested in the story of the characters, which is a fantastic element, but it's not enough to really keep me playing over and over and over again. And then the last thing is pretty nitpicky and not really necessarily a negative depending on who you are. But for me, I didn't like the inability to upgrade your inventory space because, it, like I said, it gets kind of repetitive going to the same place over and over and over again because you can't carry enough. And yes, I know that's probably by design, so I'm not going to hit them too hard for that because, you know, you want to feel like a survivor. You can't carry a million things on your back. So no crap, you can't take a hundred different supplies. But I personally got kind of annoyed only being able to bring a couple things with me and then not being able to come back with very much. Alright, up next are the graphics, and I'm happy to report that this game blows that away in my opinion. So it's got a really dark and dreary aesthetic, which is perfect because it totally fits the mood. If the world was at war and everything was blown to shit, of course it's going to be a dark, shitty place to live in, and this game hits that perfectly. And I really enjoyed the pencil style background, so it's like if you take a pencil and you lay it on its side and you scribble that to decipher something underneath it. That's what it looks like, if you know what I'm talking about. I'm not an artist, so I clearly don't have any idea what I just said, but I hope you do. I actually enjoyed the variety of animations in this game as well, outside of the art style. 
And that's because you're not always doing the same thing whenever you're moving around. So if you jump from one area to another area, it's actually going to look differently each time depending on how the map is set up. And they have this nice 2D to 3D type thing going on. So when you're playing, it seems like a side scroll. You're just moving from left and right, up and down. And it's, it feels kind of 2D. But whenever you're actually interacting with the environment, your character will move, you know, towards the back or towards the front, depending on where they're moving. So it's clearly in the 3D world. It just feels like you're playing a 2D game, which I kind of appreciated. Okay, so going back to the dark and dreary aesthetic a little bit here, this game has some color in it, and when that color appears, it's quite noticeable because it's so vivid and it stands out compared to the rest of the world, which I actually enjoyed that nice contrast and nice balance that they put in there. The final thing I'll say about this is that I really enjoyed the fact that they put a lot of little different things you can see as you're walking through the different environments. So for example, if you're in an apartment building, you might see a dead body sitting on a toilet, which is obviously depressing because it's a wartime. But it's kind of fun going through trying to spot these little things that they added and I kind of enjoyed that myself. Now we're dabbling into the sound territory and I gotta say I like some of the sounds they brought here but I also didn't like how repetitive the game got in that department. So for example you can hear the sound of shells dropping, explosives going off, gunfire when you're in a different area which is really nice because it totally adds to the atmosphere. And you might hear the sound of some wind rustling through the windows depending on where you're at which is another thing that I absolutely love. And then the music, let's talk about the music. The music fits the theme wonderfully. It really adds atmosphere. It's very moody, it's very dark, it's not super light, it's not super exciting. But that was also kind of the downside for me because there wasn't a lot of variety with it. And I don't know, variety is spice of life, they say. Next thing, they do have radio. You can tune the radio every few different days and get a different broadcast. So you might hear a different thing being announced, or you might hear a different song being played. So that actually kind of helps with that problem. The other thing is, there's no voice acting. No voice acting at all, which isn't really going to affect the score here because, I mean, I know what they're going for. They're going for that, like, journalistic type thing where it's as if you found someone's journal who lived through this and you were just reading their experiences. So I actually kind of, I get where they were coming from there. Last, but certainly not least, we're going to go ahead and dive into the story. And there's not a lot of story here, but what they do have works. It just works. I mean, the whole story of this game is that a war went off. Everything got bombed to hell. People are just trying to survive. It's a shitty environment, a shitty place, and you just got to make it through until hopefully you get rescued one day. And it's really great because the different survivors have different backgrounds and different stories. And as you progress and survive, assuming you don't lose anybody, you can open up their little biography page and it'll explain different snippets of what had happened before the war. Or it'll say, hey, this is how I feel or this is how I feel about said decisions that were made throughout the course of the game. The game also litters different notes or different examination points that you can pick out throughout the game and the different levels you go to, and that really adds a nice feel to it. It adds a different background, and it also tells you what might be going on currently, so you might know, hey, maybe I shouldn't kill this person, or maybe this person's bad. So that adds to the story, which is always a positive thing. There's also choice-based decisions in this game, which is actually positive for this title, because it's not overdone, and it's not super out there. So a survivor might come to your door and say, Hey, you know, I need this item to feed my family back home. Or, hey, I found this stash. Do you want to come with me to check it out? And you can decide, yeah, I'm going to do that. Maybe later. No, I'm not going to do it. And that actually plays a different effect because depending on what you do, there can be different consequences, which I really love that. And outside of that, you can actually run into different survivors or different people depending on where you're going. So, for example, there was a gentleman I met at a Sniper Junction, I believe it was called. And he was getting shot at, and he was like, I have a child, I need your help, please help me. And then depending on what decision you make, you can either help him, or you can leave him there to rot. It's really up to you, depending on how you want to play the game. If you want to be just out for yourself, or if you want to be there to help others. But it actually does have a nice little payoff if you, you know, depending on what decision you make. And as you progress, and you survive longer, and you make it another day and another day, you actually unlock more locations, and each location has a nice little, you know, sentence or two telling you what had happened, or what it was like before the war, or, you know, what's going on there, which adds to the story as well. And I know I talked about it being repetitive earlier, but they do have a create your own story mode, kind of, which adds a little bit more replay value. And that means you can pick any of the survivors that are already pre-built into the game, or you can make your own based off of, of some selections of different faces or different backgrounds, which will give you different skills. And then you can decide, you know, what, do I want to have a really long winner? Do I want to have a short winner? And a few, other, a few other options there as well to help you expand your story and give a different feel each time, which I liked. And then on top of that, there are actually 12 total stories you can play that are already pre-made in the game. 
So when you first load up, you only start into the one. And as you progress in the game or survive more days, you actually unlock different stories, which will have different characters and they'll have different starting things and how long it takes to, you know, make it to the ceasefire at the end of the game. And outside of that, the ending isn't too particularly exciting. I mean, you get an epilogue depending on the choices you make, so that can affect if, you know, your character is happy with themselves, upset with themselves, whatever it might be. Uh, you can kind of see what happened at the end of the war, where your characters went, but it's not anything too out of this world. And finally, I want to make sure that people know this in case you don't, you only do get one save file. So you can't start a family, start a house, whatever it might be, and then play to day 20 and decide, hey, I want to play with different characters and then go back and start a new file. If you do that, you're going to overwrite that original file and you're going to have to start completely over and you'll lose that previous save. I personally am not a fan of that. I enjoy, for, I enjoy being able to play as multiple different stories, multiple different aspects, but I get what they're going for. Once again, it's that whole survivor aspect. You can't just, you know, start over and whatnot. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the part that everybody really cares about, and that's the rating. I'm going to go ahead and rate this one a buy. It's definitely worth it. It's only $20 full price, American dollars, or whatever your equivalent is, and that's not too much to ask in my opinion for this game. I would say if it was maybe a $40 game or a $60 game, it's not worth it. But for 20 bucks, you get a lot here. There's some replay value, and the story is quite interesting, and it'll keep you engaged for quite a while. I personally put in about 15 hours, so for 20 bucks, 15 hours, enjoyable hours for the most part, completely worth it. Thank you everybody who took the time to stop by and watch this. I really do appreciate that. It means a lot to me. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel and become a part of the Vandom today. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. That's perfectly fine too. And if you want to discuss this game or anything else gaming related or anything really, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Once again, I just want to say I really do appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. And Van signing out.